This has been a very exciting week for me. Uh, I just got engaged this week. Woo! That's not true. <laughs> I got drunk by myself and stole a bag of clothes from the laundromat. <laughs> really similar to being the same thing. Oftentimes, both can lead to regret. <laughs> now you're thinking. Good. Uh, first time I did stand-up was here in St. John's about five years ago. There was a bar called The Victory. I have no idea what they are now. They are no more. Um, but they used to hold open mic comedies on Sundays and uh, one time we went in to check it out and uh, I ended up doing some time on it and it didn't make me want to die so I proceeded to do it for five years. I got called ma'am for the first time ever today at the grocery store <laughs> and the day has just been progressively worse since there. Like I think that it doesn't get better after that. I was in the supermarket, I was in line up at Sobeys. I actually felt myself aging because I was there for ever, basically. And uh, somebody says, excuse me, ma'am, I got to get through. And I didn't turn around because I'm used to looking like I'm 15. And then he taps me on the shoulder and says, ma'am? I turn around and kind of give him a look because the most predominant thing in my shopping cart is trick cereal. <laughs> Nothing about this says I'm an adult. Yeah, in my spare time, I'm allowed to work with kids. They let me do that. <laughs> Uh, it's a lot of fun, honestly, just, but it's a big thing, obviously, that, you know, the person that I end up being on stage, I can't bring that to a preschool setting and vice versa. Um, it's just kind of neat to put yourself in a different part of your brain for different occasions. Oh, man. I'm awkward. I'll tell you a bit about me, I guess. Me doing comedy is on par with, like, a stripper from Cornerbrook. I'm just like, <laughs> oh, God. Please turn around so I can get changed. My dad is here. Except I win that one because I still have all my teeth. Yeah, I'm not in this to make friends. It's OK. Uh, as, uh, as was said earlier, I just got back from my first away tour, which was a lot of fun. They uh, sent me an email. They said, we're going to send you somewhere new, exciting. You're going to network, meet new people, do new things. Ajax. <laughs> For those of you unfamiliar with the Ontario area, Ajax is to Ontario what Dildo is to Newfoundland. <laughs> you can tell them! Like, the only way that I'm ever going to see more plaid in my life is if I just spend a year of my being in a trailer park. Like, it's just, it's just a wall of plaid and John Deere hats. <laughs> I was there for like 20 minutes before I decided that if one person told me I had a real purdy mouth, I was getting the hell out of there. <laughs> On the way out to my car, I swear to God, I heard banjo music too. I was like, this is the worst thing that I'm ever going to do in my life. Most people that I've met that are doing this professionally and, you know, are making a comfortable enough living are, uh, well, they've been at it for at least a decade for the most part. Um, it's tougher to get into and it's definitely tougher to pay the bills with it. Especially, I mean, if you're living in Newfoundland, whereby there's a lot of funny people, there's a lot of really great comics coming out of here, but, you know, you still kind of have an issue of finding locations and finding jobs and regular jobs at that as well. So it's, it'd be a while before I'd say you can up and leave your day job. It's doable, but it would be a while. I, I like Newfoundland. We're a strange bunch of people. Like, everybody, more. Right, you. Yeah. Woo! Woo! This is for a Newfoundland TV station. You're allowed to get excited about this. I like Newfoundland because I think that this is the only place in the world where it is more socially acceptable than not to be hammered at your grandmother's birthday. <laughs> like, I'm at a family function holding a soda and I got five people come up to me like, listen, the ants are starting to talk. You might want to have a beer. Um, I got a roommate and it's been a really good kind of learning experience because it kind of helps me figure out how to interact with people. So uh, what I've started to do, because I fear conflict, I don't like confrontation, so what I've started doing is I've started talking to him when he's asleep. <laughs> like, I'll wait for him to fall asleep on the couch and then I just make sure that he's good and dead to the world. I'm like, hey man, man, you know how you finished off the mustard last week and you didn't buy a new one but you put the empty one back in the fridge? That made me so angry. So what I've been doing every morning before I wake, before you wake up and go to work is I've moved your granola bars to a different cupboard. <laughs> It'll be mildly inconveniencing for you. 
Also, sometimes when you leave the house for an extended period of time, I like to just stand in your room and fart. <laughs> I'm glad that you like that, because he didn't. The worst two shows that I think I've ever done were in, uh, in St. John's. Um, one of them was a couple of years ago, and uh, the microphone was stuck in the stand. We were just doing like a kind of, I think we were actually doing a fundraiser for Haiti, so we had a lot of um, comedians, musicians, different performers kind of doing this thing. And uh, the mic was stuck, and I kept trying to pull it out, and finally when I got it out, it ran back and it smacked me in the face and it cut my lip open. So I did like a 20 minute set bleeding from my face. I ended up having to get a stitch after the next morning, which was awesome. I'm, I'm getting a little older. I'm trying to be like a responsible grown up. I'm trying to take better care of myself. I had to go to the hospital a little while ago for like a full physical checkup. And you go in thinking that you're a healthy, normal person and you come out convinced that you're dying eight different ways because of the posters. <laughs> like I remember when I was a kid, the posters used to be fun. They used to be like cartoon germs going down a sink because you were washing your hands properly or like a giant nose running away from a perfume bottle. And now it's really scary stuff. It's everyday looking people. They look like you and me. They're on a gray background. Their arms are crossed. They look miserable. And the captions are always stuff like, would you shake hands with me? <laughs> that's exactly the kind of thinking that's going to get you AIDS. <laughs> have you ever breathed air in a public space? Well, now you have tuberculosis. <laughs> I think that one day what they're going to do is they're going to have a new Healthcare in Canada is relatively coverable. So I think that what they're going to do in about 90 years, they're going to have a new poster. It's going to be fun. It's going to be colorful. It's going to be a 98-year-old man with a giant mole on his head, not a tooth in his face, smiling, smoking through the hole in his throat. And the caption is just, screw it. It's probably nothing. <laughs>